Looks like it's good to go. Cool. Just talking about the tight end room uh, yesterday, they were talking about how they lost kind of body fat percentage and just from a winter break almost up to now. Can you talk about how that kind of went through the process of you know, telling them what they should eat and what their diet looks like? Yeah, so I think one of the big things we learned just when we got here in general is we, we kind of talked about if you emphasize everything, you emphasize nothing. And so we, we kind of developed this system or, or plan, not just one year, two year, three, where we wanted this place to go and understanding those things are going to take time. So for us this year, one of those main things in January, we sat down before the team got here. One of the big emphasis of this offseason was going to be nutrition of really understanding because we have so many resources that ain't even funny. I played D3 football and like ramen noodles and, and then like you know, microwave mac and cheese. That was what like we lived off of. Every once in a while the coach would come in and drop bagels off on the, on the training tables and it'd be like 12 of them. So whoever was first come first serve, that's, you know, that's what we were used to. Um, so it was really one, educate on the, on the resources. But what we showed them too is, you know, one of the easiest ways to increase team speed, which that was one of the other main emphasis this off season, is to, to drop body fat. So we talk about all the time, you know, muscle moves, mass fat don't fly. And so for us, that was one of the biggest ways is, you know, our first, one of those first kind of markers year one was we were just wildly undersized. If you looked at almost positional average, especially the big positions, you're talking almost 20 pounds across the board. So last off season, I mean that going into the, the previous year, that was our main emphasis. Let's just get, we got to get bigger just so we can survive a 12, 14, 15 game schedule. This year was team speed. And so for, for, for me looking at that, there, there's a lot of ways you can do it. You can get more powerful, you can build strength, you can work on speed mechanics, but by far the easiest way to do it is that, is, is, is working on those. So, um, you know, we went from our first year here, we, we, had, we had 22 guys on the roster that could run 20 plus miles per hour. Going into the last season, we had 42 guys that could run 20 plus miles per hour. Going into this August, we have 69 guys on the roster now that are running over 20 miles an hour. So. We, we kind of looked at it one piece of time, but so, and, and all those tight ends as well, like Jared Casey come, comes to mind. I think Jared yeah. dropped almost 7% body fat, um, but he also, he increased almost two miles per hour on his, his max velocity. So that was a huge, huge piece. And it wasn't just for the tight end, but that was for the entire team. Yeah. And if you look at that, we, we emphasize that a ton with nutritional education, supplementation, and you know, as, as you know, once again, it, it was just a main point of what we emphasized for the entire year. So I think that was a, a huge part of, of some of the transformations you saw was just that, that piece of nutrition. And, and Stacy Potter and her staff just do a great job with, with helping us with that stuff as well. What was the process like of reshaping the body for DJ Withers specifically? <laughs> you know, the crazy thing about DJ is that like, you look at him now, and he's one of those guys, you know, it's like, I, sometimes I forget that he weighs almost 315 pounds because he came here at 256. But he's a guy that's 315, and if you just if you didn't know, if I didn't tell you that, like you would I guess his weight. You'd probably say like 280. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is DJ is still very underdeveloped. Like when you look at, at DJ's just strength levels and where he's at, my, my point is he's got a long ways to go still in his developmental process. Like that's a body that's going to be scary to look at in in a couple of years when he continues to develop because he's 315 on accident. You know, like that just kind of happened. Um, so, and like I so said, you look at just kind of some of his numbers where he's got a lot of developing to do still. So for him, it's just, he's wildly consistent in how he goes about it. He's got a great mentality and mindset of what he does. Um, and he's, the process has paid him back in a lot of ways. He's made a lot of progress. But to me, I think we were talking about this yesterday. He, he's a guy that I'm like, man, like, what is he going to look like in two years? He, he's, he's special. He's exciting. And with the Hawk position and the skills that it requires, how do you kind of train those guys to be able to do the linebacker stuff while still covering at a safety like level? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a hybrid training yeah. model. So those guys, you know, in, in, in very generally, okay, the closer you are to the ball, the, the more strength related things we're going to do with you. The further you are away from the ball, think, you know, safety, wide receiver, we're going to do more on field skill type acquisition, you know, things that we're going to train in the off season. Those guys are kind of in the middle of it. So those guys, We'll definitely get some extra weight room stuff to keep them bulky and, and what they need to do to, to be able to, to play in that front seven. Um, but we spend a lot more time with those particular positions so that they can do things, you know, so they get a lot of specific training to, to do those things. A lot of guys yesterday were tabbing J.P. Brown as the strongest guy on the team. Can you put in perspective, like, his strength pound for pound? Yeah, so... I think relatively, okay, like one of my philosophies is I do think there's such thing as strong is strong enough, um, which we're like, uh, super excitingly, we're, we're at a point where we're starting to get guys like that to where they've kind of hit what, what are our parameters of, you know, I, I have a theory that I think, you know, you, you know, in general, if you look at sports, injuries at all time high, 
but we know more about, about injury prevention and sports science than ever before. So, so why is that? Well, I think there's a lot of uh, theories behind that, but I think we get to a point now where we have, there, there's so much that we, that we know, but we have athletes that are so strong and so fast that those collisions, the miles per hour, the, the force they have to produce and then put in the ground to stop, it's, it's totally different than ever been before. So to me, I think there's an ideal strength, you know, so there's guys, guys like him are, are, are there, guys like Devin Neal, like those guys are at a point where if you can power clean 350, do you need to power clean 365? Like, is that what's going to take you to the next level becoming a football player? Or is it more specific football skill acquisition that's going to help you? So is the weight room really that piece of it or is it more things we do on field? So um, I think that's, that's a question we're always trying to answer. But yeah, I mean, like strong is strong enough. I think that's that's kind of where it is with, with, with JB as well. So JB's a guy that yeah, he squatted 600 pounds at a speed I've never seen in my entire career. You know, we, we try everything we track is, is based off velocities. So um, we, we program, we don't say 80% of your one rep max. We say we're gonna, we're gonna squat at this speed today, which we know is gonna give us a certain outcome in the human body. So we look at that, J.B. Brown, damn near speed squat at 600 pounds, where I'm just like, yeah, he's done for the day, that's good. Like, that's all we need to see, you know? Like, um, so we, have a, we like I said, it, it's, it's exciting that we have some of those guys in that regard, but, but those, are, those, those are kind of the things in our wavelength that we have. So I guess my answer to your question is he could be even stronger. We're just kind of the point where we're like, yeah, that's 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 good. It's obviously one of the bigger freshman classes in terms of scholarship guys you guys have had. So for a camp like this and the first six months for them in the program, what's kind of the, the big goal for them? Culture it is, is, is we've got to lay that foundation of how first. I tell you what I'm most impressed with this freshman class is, is, is probably just that as far as these guys, they love football, which you, you, I mean, that there's a lot of, uh, in this generation of athlete in general, there's so many things that come with what, it, what, you know, the things you get and what it gives you outside of this. And, and sometimes it becomes less about the actual game. With this freshman class, like, I'd say that's by far what I'm most excited about is you just get this feeling like they love football. They're out there. When you watch those dudes, Jameel Croft and Jacoby Davis and Logan Brantley and, and Keaton, and you see like all like, the way these guys practice and we're like, they love the game. And I'm like, man, like, I haven't seen people love the game like this in, in a few years as far as just a freshman class coming in, loves to play football, loves the process. So um, this this one has been really exciting. I, I'm, I'm super excited for how this class continues to develop in all regards, just by their habits, the way they go about it. But that's always the first thing, because for us, it's it's guys come in with certain levels of expectations, certain levels of uh, a reality, what they think this is. You know, Taylor Davis has told me about ten times that this is the hardest thing he's ever done in his life. I said, "We're just getting started, buddy." So, um, <laughs> and, and he's a great young man too. But so there, there's there's those pieces. Of thing. But for us, like ooh, the you know. For us at Kansas, what's always going to separate us no matter how good a recruiting classes we get is how we do things, period. And we can't waver on those things. And those are things that day one, you've got to understand that expectation. So we're going to come in and those guys, we're going to do two things really quickly is we're going to make sure they know what the expectation is. And then we're going to start implementing that they know how to meet it, right? Not just you come in, here's a standard, okay, fall in line. Well, in this day and age, that ain't realistic. These guys come from all over, all different kind of backgrounds, mom, dad, brother, whatever that is. And we think that we have this, we, we say we have this really high standard of how we do things. And we're gonna expect a freshman, 18 year old kid, 17 year old kid that comes from who knows where to just come in and just know how to meet those things. So that's very something we're extremely intentional about. When you get here to Kansas, we're not gonna operate in any gray area, okay? This is what the standard is. And then we're gonna met, uh, immediately start devising a plan of, of teaching you how to, how to meet that. So we're setting you up for success is, is what we're trying to do at a very young age. So that's the first thing. And then, you know, the physical part of it, it's all, it's also different. It's also individualized as far as where they come in. Some guys come in with four plus years of training experience under their belt. Some guys have never picked up a barbell. You know, you look at like Marcus Calvin, if you look at him of, of where, like what his high school had, he just didn't have anything to really work with. So when he came here, you're talking about a blank campus, okay? And he's been tremendous as well, but um, it's kind of all respect with those guys. So I think to lump them all into this group and just say, hey, let's all train in the same, to me, we're not gonna get what we need to get out of it. So we kind of have different, programs and, and pieces that will physically train them based off what they need and where they're at. We'll kind of meet them halfway there. Now that you've been in the new weight room for a little bit, just what have you kind of learned about it and how it's going to work for you guys? Yeah, I mean, I'm be honest with you guys. Like it's, it's, you know, most people have a dream house they dream of building someday, right? And then like, you know, people are lucky enough to get to do that. For a strength coach, guys, like this is what that feels like. Just, and, and I'm being, I'm being totally honest about that. 
So I'm gonna be honest, like it hasn't said, I haven't had a chance to just look at it through like an unbiased perspective. Like that's my dream house down there, okay? And like it, it, it's it, the opportunity to design that, to get what, what we got down there and to be as, as integral of a part uh, uh, that I was able to be a part of that. Um, I mean, that's like building your dream retirement home, you know? So it's it's got every piece that I could ever want and, and imagine. So I walk in every morning and I'm just like, you know, I was, I was happy before, you know, I don't even know what to tell you what, like, I can't really describe what it is, but that, that's the best way I can say it. It's like, it's like walking in your dream home, home on a daily basis. And I think even our guys to a certain extent, like when we walk, you come watch us train right now, it don't feel like a cycle four day two training day, you know, in the weight room. Like you go in there, it feels like an off season. All these guys are ready to get after it. And so it's, it's been a, it's been a good momentum boost, I think, too, through through camp. I don't know how many guys I've heard say this, but a lot of guys across this this team and throughout camp have said, "I'm heavier than I've ever been and faster than I've ever been." Can you give a simple explanation? Is that is that that muscle moves mass, fat doesn't fly philosophy? Is that is that how that happens? Yeah. So you you have a you have a leaner football team with less fat, more muscle mass, and I think it's a lot of of of, of how we train too. You know, once again, if I sit here and told you we emphasize team speed this year, we got slower. You might be looking at different guys coming up here next year. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, we we spend a ton of time. I mean, we spend a ton of intentional time to work on that, um, on on trying to continue to build size, but reshape it and, and getting it to move better. And that's I don't care what position you play. Like at the end of the day, I've still never seen a squat rack on a 50 yard line. The team that squats most wins a game. So we've got to be able to move. If we can't move, then nothing we do is is, is worth is worth the, the, the squeeze, you know? Yeah. Um, so for us, even as, as, as offensive line, defensive line, D tackles, centers, offensive guard, like, movement is still always going to be the foundational piece of our, our program in the off season. These guys have got to move. The strength that we develop in the weight room, the only way that crosses over the field is, is through movement. And then so for us, creating leverage and teaching these guys how to move and do those things, that's, that's first and foremost. So they feel better, they're moving more efficiently. And, and you know, the cool thing nowadays is, and we weren't doing this even five years ago, is we can see that and measure that now. We have 100 catapult units on this team now. I mean, they, even that, when we got here, we had 40. Mm -hmm. Last year we had 65, well now we have 100. So even our data of what we can look at and just, just analyze, you know, because I think one of the million dollars question is, I mean, people always talk about, and I think I think sometimes we get stuck, especially as sports performance coaches, of, okay, you know, you got, you got your 40 went from a 4.8 to a 4.6, did you get faster? Yes. Did you become a better football player? The answer used to be a lot of times the strength coach would be yes. Right. For us, we don't accept that. For us, we want to dig in the weeds a little bit to say, like, okay, did we actually get faster? So we can sit there and say, yeah, Craig Young went from a, a 20.5 miles an hour my, uh, max velocity sprint to a 21.5, but how is he practicing? Mm -hmm. Okay, Quentin Skinner, he, he's a he's a 22.7 miles per hour guy in the off season. He's also hit it on the practice field three times this camp. So he's playing at that speed. So for us, that's where we can sit there. And now we can go, okay, it, whatever it is, it's, it's working, right? And so we try to ask the deeper question there um, as we analyze, and we still have a lot of things we can improve too. So that, that's really what excites me the most is, yes, we've had good results, but we're gonna keep on finding ways to have even, even better results. Yeah, and I, I wanted to ask you about the 1% better thing. Um, obviously a staple of what you guys have been about here, and, and I talked to a bunch of your guys yesterday. How do you how do you measure that? What does that mean? What does that look like? And, and they said with you, it's actual numbers. It's actual data. It can be one percent of of a weight or a, a speed or whatever. Um, in, in other areas, it's different. But but how much of that do you dial up one percent? I mean, is that is that ever something you do? Or? So yeah, I mean, there there's the uh, the semantics of it. I think in general for us, it's, it's just talking. It's, it's it's the general concept okay, yeah, to the guys. Yeah. It is it's how we're trying to get of. of but it's just, you know, the real the realistic nature is that sometimes that's that's hard. You know, like, yeah. like you were as good as you could have been yesterday. Well, it's it's, it's hard to want, but like what can you find today to try to improve yourself at your craft? And for us, that's what we talk. When we go back to the process, and, and you see our guys like our guys lifting short right now says the process. And we talk about process all the time. Process, process is such a buzzword. Well, for us, that's what the process is. Mm -hmm. Is that every morning, if if you wake up and you truly try to attack to get better at something and you trust that and you give it everything you have, that the process is gonna pay you back eventually. And if we trust in that, we're not necessarily, work, we're not worried about the results or the outcomes of what are gonna come, we, we trust the process. And if, if we do that and we have that 1% mentality, that's, that's what we're talking about. So it's more conceptual with how we get it and, and, and trying to define those kind of things, um, which I think our guys have obviously you know, bought into a ton. But in this day and age, we are such a result-driven, you know, world, um, and an outcome-driven world, and and, a, and I should say an immediate outcome-driven world. And when you don't get those things, um, 
it's it's tough, you know. You, you might know, and then, and football is just such a reality check in that you might have a guy who has an off season and it's the best he's ever done, and he's bought into all those things, and he might have a season ending injury. Well, why me? Why this? And the thing is, is in life, you know, you don't know when the process is going to pay you back, and it sure as hell doesn't always pay you back the way you might might thought it would. Um, but to, 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 to us, if you trust it long enough, like you're eventually going to reap the rewards of that. And so we just focus on, on a daily basis, continue to harp on if we develop the, the root enough, you know, the, the fruits are going to come and, sure. and when and where and how, you know, I don't know. I, I, we can't always answer that question, but, but we, we do know that if you trust it for long enough, it's going to pay you back as a father, as a husband, as a son, as a coworker, as a boss, as a football player, at some point in time, you're going to reap the rewards of those habits. So. It's development habits is what we're trying to do. Looking at Demarius McGee, he said he's gone from about 160 to 175. 160? He's old. He, he 152 when he got here. I, got, <laughs> I can show you the figure, man. I think I got a screenshot of him <laughs> right now. But he's already put on a lot of weight yeah. since he's walked in the building. Yeah. What is that transformation process for him been like? Just great buy-in. You know, like he, he's just a guy that, that, that that's the, the best part when you have guys that come in and just embrace it right away. And that's the thing about Demarius is Demarius didn't, he didn't fight us on any of it, you know, because there's enough things out there that are uncontrollables that are hard enough to deal with, let alone when you don't take care of things that are directly in your control. And at the end of the day, gaining weight, it's, it's not science, it's a mathematical equation, okay? You got to intake more calories than you are, are, are burning, or that, that, that you're, you got to intake more than you're burning. And, and you don't do that, you're not going to gain weight. You do do it, you're going to gain weight. And so for us, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of, of just here's the plan, are you going to follow the plan or not? And Demarius has, and has, has, has continued to do those things. And um, the way he moves, the way he does, I think he's going to be a big help for us. What about Wheeler? Um... Yeah, it, it, we keep hearing it started to click for him. Yeah. How much of that is, is what you've done with him? And, and not to praise you, but just that work in the weight room and that kind of stuff. Yeah, that, that, to me, that's a byproduct of just of Cornell as far as mentality and maturity. Okay. Yeah. What, what limited Cornell before was just was just truly, like truly, truly embracing it and, and, and really like, like it becoming really a part of his life. And you notice that all the time, like guys' progression is always gonna follow their level of investment. Well, he started investing a ton this year, and he started seeing a lot of rewards of, of, of those labors. And so, to me, that that's that's it. He just started following the plan a little bit harder. And that's not not to fault Cornell or anybody. Like, how many guys have to learn that lesson? But uh, that that's the one thing we're always going to preach too. Is so Cornell. I mean, to me, I don't know that how much changed as far. He's always been a great worker. He's always worked hard and done those things. But to me, he just this this season he really embraced what it was going to take. But he's a guy that. You know, it's always fun when guys accidentally catch your attention. You know, like especially for me, because I I go from drill to drill, and I kind of just watch practice from bird's eye view, and coach and I will kind of pass and talk, and you know, but multiple times you say, "Oh, here's Cornell," yeah, yeah. and you've done that about seven, eight times this camp, where you see him doing things he wasn't doing physically before. But it's all a byproduct of of the mindset mentality of of how they're buying. And, and guys, I'll say this: like we haven't talked about this, and we need to. Is if you look at our football team and the kind of players that we have here, okay? This summer, the thing we did that was better than anything, in my opinion, of any number we got, this team completed 500 hours of community service this offseason, okay? Just this summer, in an eight-week summer program. Why do I mean that's such a big deal? Well, look at the world that we live in and how transactional this world is. Is, is okay, I'll do something for you, but, but what am I getting back in it, okay? So for us and for our culture, we preach on a daily basis. Like, think, really think about that, guys. You got 18 to 22-year-old kids that have out, gone out there and sacrificed and, and served 22 hours of their time in the middle of summer when they could have been doing whatever they want. And they already got to see me once a day for a couple hours. They've already worked out. This is all afternoon stuff. And none of this is mandatory. This is all just, a, this is why we do it, create a servant's mentality. But I'm trying to create a picture for you guys of when we talk about this program, wins and losses, that's great. And that's always going to be important. I don't want everyone to think that we're not going to prioritize competing at the highest level here. But inside these walls, guys, like what these guys are buying into and doing, like those are any question you have, those are the answers. It's the players, okay? You got a head coach that emphasizes the players over anything, fights for them on a daily basis and do, does those things. But the level of, of, of buy-in into those little things, if you can get 18 to 22-year-old guys to buy into freaking community service guys, it tells you what, what, what's happening within the leadership council, within the locker room. And to me, like, I, I don't know, guys, you can publish what you're going to publish, but I'm, I'm most proud about that, of just our, of, of our guys. You can't make them do it, but yet, I mean, 500 hours, guys, I mean, you do the math, that's a, that, that's a lot. That's a, that's a lot of volunteer work in the summertime in an eight-week program. And really, they, they had a week break, so you're really talking seven weeks. They would accomplish that. So um, 
as we kind of have these commonalities of these answers mm -hmm. of me talking about that. I'm not just saying it to say it, guys, and give them credit. I'm just telling you, like, we demand a ton of stuff in this program on a daily basis, and it ain't easy to be here, I'll tell you that. It is very demanding. It's very rewarding in the sense of what I think they're going to get in life out of this program. Wins, losses, guys, like I said, we're going to give them hell, man. We're going to do whatever we can to compete at championship level here. But one thing I'm super confident in is we are producing men that are getting ready to go out in the real world. And, and, and to me, that's, that's why I show up every day and do this. Um, and I have a head coach that believes in that, that truly believes in that, guys, and like truly pushes that. I mean, that's as special as it can be. It's, it's what makes Kansas home. It's, it's, uh, it's cool. It's very cool. Well, that was great. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate, Appreciate you. It.